Hi, and welcome to the Jay Hudgens Tech Tips channel, where I upload all kinds of helpful tutorials to help you in your business, home, or your hobby. If you like what you see here today, don't forget to like and subscribe, because I'm constantly uploading helpful content for the general public to use. In this quick tip tutorial, I'm going to show you how to program and configure the Grandstream HT818 Analog Gateway. This Grandstream 818 gateway is great for PBX lines, fax lines, credit card lines, alarm lines, pretty much any lines you can think of. It uses SIP protocol and when programmed correctly is a very reliable trunking source. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a company that specializes in almost everything telecom. This company is US Tech. For years, US Tech has been an industry leader in telephone systems, SIP protocol gateways, voice over IP, and UC client. US Tech has a reputation of giving over the top tech support, and right now, US Tech is giving away free Yaling VoIP phones for every seat that you sign up for. They can even pre program a system and have it shipped right away while they stay on standby for any reasonable assistance necessary. Is your phone bill too high? Let them drastically reduce your monthly bill using SIP protocol. Just click on the link in the description below to get a free quote and even a callback if needed. That's US Tech, your one-stop shop for everything telecom. They do it all for you. The first thing you want to do is plug your internet source or your ISP into the WAN port of the gateway. Then you want to plug your laptop into the LAN port. In your web browser, you want to enter 192.168.2.1. And then you'll come to this screen right here. The default password is admin. So username is admin, default password is admin. I already changed it, so I'm going to put in my password. And just hit login. It'll bring you to this page right here. And I already have some SIP trunks already programmed into my FXS ports here. I'm going to give you a general uh, rundown of what to do uh, when you do log into this gateway. We are going to use core dial SIP trunks on our US tech platform. Now, when you first log in, you'll see all the information here. You'll see uh, eight FXS ports and you'll see that they're not registered. Scroll down, got port options, nothing else you want to do on this screen right now. First thing you want to do is go to basic settings. Now you're going to want to change the uh, default password from admin to whatever you want to make it here, change it here, change it here, and change it here, all the same password. You're going to want to change your port to your HTTP web port from 80 to uh, something that's more secure like you know 1358 or you know 12345 something like that and then you're going to have to apply it down here and reboot when you do that but before you do that um, after you change your port number you want to whitelist you know if this is for remote programming you want to whitelist your office IP address or your home IP address and the way you get that address is just do an IP chicken on your uh, internet browser just type in IP chicken and it'll give you your public IP address and that's the one you want to whitelist you want to put that in here and up here you want to click uh, either leave it at auto or click yes and that'll give you access to this remotely and then you're going to want to click apply and then reboot another thing you want to do up here is um, right now it's set dynamically so it's just going to get an IP address of your internet source and that's what it's going to be using you can set it statically if you want to set it to set it to a static IP address or an internal static IP address uh, you could do that right here that's what I recommend doing and then you're going to have to reboot to make these new passwords stand and another place you want to change the password is in advanced settings and that's a maintenance password so administrative password you're gonna put whatever you want here confirm the password here and then you're gonna click save and reboot again okay now we want to start building our trunks in our platform so we're gonna to go to profile one 
and you'll see uh, profile active you want to set that to yes this primary SIP server is where you're going to get from your provider you know our provider is Cordial and we go th through our US tech uh, portal to get that so if you don't know about US tech um, just email me or write a reply and I'll hook you up but uh, right now in our portal we're gonna build a new SIP trunk and we'll just call it 401 SIP and we would hit apply I don't need any more SIP trunks so I'm gonna not apply that one but this is the information on this SIP trunk that we're gonna need for the gateway we're gonna need a username a password and a SIP registration host name now this this right here is what we want to copy for this profile right here SIP server we're gonna paste that in there so after you have your SIP server proxy URL right here we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click keep alive we're gonna set the expiration to 2 it's usually by default set to 60 register expiration we're gonna to set to 2 we're gonna scroll down and here is this is usually set to no but allow incoming SIP messages from SIP proxy only is what we want so we're gonna click that to yes that's very important otherwise your your phone lines will start ringing off the hook from uh, robots trying to dial in so you wanna click that yes then you wanna scroll down to enable call features it's usually set to yes we're gonna click that no for enable call features go ahead and scroll down and right here where it says hunting group type it's usually set to circular we're gonna click linear because we have PBX ports line ports that we want to use and you usually want it to go from line 1 line 2 line 3 line 4 in the hunt group if you set it to circular it's not gonna go in order 1 through 8 so you want to keep it at linear for your PBX system to hunt from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Okay, after you set that, you're going to scroll down to loop current disconnect right here. And you're going to click yes. It's usually set to no, but this enables the lines to hang up when your customer hangs up. That uh, If you have it set to yes, that means it's going to disconnect the call when that's what you want so set that to yes and that's really all there is for the profile for our trunks we're gonna put the SIP server here which is where we got this from in our US tech platform we're gonna um, click keep alive we're gonna go down to allow income SIP messages from SIP proxy only we're gonna click yes we're going to go to enable call features we're going to click select no we're going to go down to hunting group type we're going to select linear we're going to scroll all the way down to loop current disconnect we're going to click yes and we're going to hit apply now the next thing we want to do is start building our ports we have eight ports on this device and they are shown in FXS ports so I already have some ports built here and where I got these from your SIP user ID and your authenticate ID and your password are over on our US tech portal so you'll see SIP username so what we would do is uh, copy and paste that copy and paste that right here there we want to get our password SIP password copy it and we're going to copy this in right here and that is going to be line one for our PBX system and we're going to hit apply we're going to go back to FXS ports right here we're going to go back to here and you'll see the password will disappear once it is applied now you can name this which is what I did I named it line one and under profile ID we're gonna leave it at profile one but for hunting see on these 
two lines right here, these two lines are going to hunt in our PBX system. So the way you want to do that is you want to make this active, select active, and you're going to make this one. And this one means this is going to hunt from line one or port one. And that's what you would do. So if you had, let's say you had three hunting lines, you would just select one there as well and so on. If you had all of these were just hunting lines, you had eight lines in your PBX system and you wanted them to hunt, this is going to be active and all these are just going to be ones and then it'll hunt from port one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. We're going to put this back to none because it's not a hunting line. Yeah, as you can see from my portal, I built other uh, SIP trunks as well. I built this SIP trunk and once again the username goes, or the user the user, SIP username would go right here and right here, and the password would go here. So, username in twice, password once, and I named that alarm. And since it's not going to be hunting in a PBX, there's no hunting. You keep, still keep it at profile one because this, is, this profile one is this primary SIP server. So they're registering, they're registering to that SIP server. So I built an alarm one, I built an alarm two, I built a credit card SIP trunk, all on profile one. Now I wanted to build a fax line, and for our US tech portal, we have a separate fax server. So we can go down here and we select T38 fax line, and we'll build a new fax line. And you'll see when we scroll down, this SIP registration hostname is different than our other one. Uh, this is an A1ES. So where we want to put that, we want to copy that, go up here, and now we can make go to profile two. Since it's this fax line is not going to register to this, it's going to register to this. So we want to put that for profile two. And then we're going to go down again, just like we did in profile one. We're going to put it at keep alive and we're going to scroll down and we're going to put register expiration two instead of 60. We're going to scroll all the way down and click yes for allow incoming SIP messages from SIP proxy only. We're going to scroll down and we're going to select no for enable call features. We're going to select linear, which really doesn't matter for a fax line because it's not hunting anyways. So, but I, I put it like that anyways, just to get you in, you know, keep it in your mind when you're doing PBX systems. Then you want to scroll down and look for loop disconnect, loop current disconnect. We're going to set it yes, and we're going to click apply. So now. What we would do is go back to our, we would go back to our fax registration page. We've already put this into our URL for our registration. Now we need to put SIP username and the password. So we're going to go back and under fax, this is where we're building it. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do it again here. And we're going to go back for the password. And we're going to put the password here and it will disappear once we save it. We're going to name it fax. But look right here, instead of profile one, we're going to go to profile two because it's going to be using profile two connecting to this server address. And for hunting, we don't need hunting here, so we'll leave that at none. Um, and don't forget all these enabled ports would be these would be set to yes these ports would be all enabled set to yes except for the two that you're not using you can set those to no and you're going to apply and that's all there is to it now when you go to your status page you'll see I didn't create new ones for this one so they say not registered but these are registered because I did create new ones um, but basically your FX 1 and 2 ports are going to be your phone lines for your PBX system 1 and 2. This will say registered. 
This will always say not registered, but it is going to hunt between these two lines. You will have dial tone on this, and it will hunt between these two lines. So you don't have to register this line port too. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So after you check that out, you'll see that your SIP trunks are registered, all six of them. These are not because you turned these off. And then you can go in your US Tech portal and you can look at your SIP trunks. Well, we didn't create those SIP trunks, so um, you're not going to see them here, but they would have a green light next to them, the SIP trunk that you created. And that's all there is to it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I'm constantly uploading new material for the general public to use. Hey, you know, a lot of people ask me, how do you record your computer screen like that? I tell them it's so easy with Camtasia from TechSmith. In my opinion, Camtasia is the most affordable and easiest recording software to learn. You don't need a big budget or fancy video editing skills. Simply record your screen, add a few effects, call outs, musical backgrounds, and bam, you're done. Upload it directly to YouTube or your computer or whatever video hosting site you choose. It's that easy. And right now, Camtasia is letting my friends try it out for free for one month. You can't lose with that deal. Just click on the link in the description below and start your free trial today.